Because this is what always happens when God is trying to do something in your life. The enemy will always present another enemy that is not the real enemy to keep you distracted from fighting the one that you're called to defeat. In David's case, it was his brother, his big brother. <laughs> his name kind of sounds like Goliath, but it's not Eliab. He was tall. For a minute, Samuel thought he was supposed to be the king because Saul was tall, and he saw in uh, Samuel saw in Eliab what he had seen in Saul, which is height, not heart. And God said, "Don't look at his height. Look at his heart. Stop judging your situation externally." It's what's inside that counts. It's what's inside that counts. And Eliab starts judging David's motives. He's like, look at this in verse 28. He goes, um, uh, why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep? Now, all of these things David had taken care of. He's a very responsible young man. But, but really what's happening here is I believe the enemy is trying to trigger David to get him to fight the wrong person. Because watch, if he stands here and argues with his brother, he will never even see his enemy. This might be the whole sermon for somebody. Now just look straight ahead if you're married. Sometimes you're fighting against what you're supposed to be fighting for. And you have to call a timeout sometimes. You have, to, you have to sometimes be like, wait a minute, you're not my enemy. Wait a minute, you're, you're, you're not who I'm supposed to be fighting. And, and if, if David gets caught up fighting Eliab, he never sees Goliath. If he gets distracted, some of us are defeated simply because we're distracted. Now, you know how the story ends, but think about how it could have ended. David, for the next two hours, defends himself to Eliam. I was the other day checking on some Instagram posts, seeing if they were touching people's lives. You know, I would like to say that I always do it with a pure heart, but sometimes I'll scroll to look for people who say mean things to me. And that's a dysfunction. And I'm not saved all the way yet. I am saved. I was saved. I'm being saved. This is the part that's in progress. Because sometimes I just like to imagine the response I could send. You know what the Spirit of the Lord told me the other day? First of all, it's one out of 300 people who say something negative. That's number one. Number two, if you would invest a fraction of the energy into blessing people that you put into defending yourself, you would be Mother Teresa. You would be Saint Paul. You could change the world if you would stop trying to defend yourself. And I'm coming right for you because some of us trip over an offense, and so we never defeat the real opponent because we stand and argue with Eliab and we never even get to Goliath. Isn't that so powerful? It could have. It could have had a whole different ending. It could have been a whole lot different. And I bet Aunt Jackie wouldn't have taught me that Bible story in Sunday school if David had stood there and argued with Eliab. Now, here's the thing that's practical about this. Some of you are fighting Eliab today. And because you're fighting Eliab, Goliath continues to go unchallenged in your life. You know you're fighting Eliab if you're still blaming people. David did this move that I want to learn how to do when I realize I'm fighting the wrong enemy, when I realize I'm fighting something outside when I really need to be dealing with something inside, when I realize I'm trying to control how other people are versus trying to have self-control the fruit of the Spirit for myself. This is a word today. This is a word today. It said that David did something very strategic, and this is like the, the turning point of the story. It said in verse 30 that when Eliab was going back and forth in David, David hit him real quick with an insult just to let him know, I'm not a punk. And then after he said what he had to say, watch what he did. David turned and asked somebody else. And watch this. When he turns away from Eliab, it positions him to face Goliath.
So whoever is for, you'll never even get to Goliath. You will never even get to the insecurity that is causing the issue if you keep blaming the people who are bringing it out for you to look at. Eliab wasn't the giant. Eliab wasn't the enemy. Eliab was his brother that he was supposed to fight for. So now we've watched David. Two different alternate endings. If he argues with Eliab, then he misses Goliath. If he doesn't obey his father in a simple thing, then he misses Goliath. It could have. Graham was so prophetic. He said, "It could have ended a whole lot different." I was so mad at my mom for forgiving my dad. I didn't think he deserved it. What would that funeral have been like if she had listened to me rather than listening to God? If we weren't even on speaking terms when he died, it could have ended up. And I only bring it up because every story in this room is still being written. And sometimes you think you know how it ends. But what if it's not over yet? What if it's not over yet? I'm going to preach it through that little facade that you have right now. What if it's not over yet? What if, what if you've wasted a lot of time, but what if God really is able to redeem the years that the locusts have eaten? What if it's not over yet? I'm just posing a question. What if it's not over yet? What if your best days are not behind you? What if the devil is a liar? What if everything that you have been through can serve a greater purpose? What if a generational curse was being broken through your battle? What if God brought you to the Valley of Elah because he's the God of a turnaround, the God of a second chance, the God of a new beginning, and the God of a new ending? Mary and Martha said, I know how this story ends. But one thing they didn't know is that Jesus doesn't provide resurrection. He is resurrection. So if he's on the scene, watch this. When David showed up, he said, I come against you in the name of the Lord. Now, one more thing I got to show you. Y'all, calm down. It's a Bible study, not a football game. It's not a basketball game. There's nothing to be excited about in here. It's not like the blood of Jesus is enough for you. It's not like depression is defeated. It's not like the devil has to back up when you call on the name of your God. It's not like worship can push back darkness. It's not like praise can bring change. Y'all sit down. Because now he has to go through Saul, the one that should have been celebrating him, the one that should have been supporting him. David kills Goliath. Stop being so boring when you read the Bible. The Bible's boring. You're boring. Read it better. This thing could have had so many endings. It could have ended when David had a bad attitude toward the ordinary. It could have ended when David was fighting against who he was supposed to be fighting for. He could have got offended. It could have ended with ordinary. It could have ended with offense, and it could have ended with only. Do you know only? The spirit of lack and limitation? Do you know only? What Saul said to David? David was like showing Saul his resume. He was like, I'm pretty good at beating stuff that's bigger than me. I beat a lion one time. I beat a bear. Put me in, coach. And Saul said, you're only a boy. I wonder what you're only in your own mind. Remember, Saul wasn't the enemy. Saul was supposed to be a friend. You ever have something inside of you turn on you? You're only. I had it this week. I was thinking that I'm just a preacher. Because I was thinking how really influencing culture is done through 
uh, rappers and fashion and others. And, and I was thinking about changing a generation, and I felt discouraged about it, like I'm only a preacher. But there's this one verse that always comes up when I think that way. And God told Jeremiah one time, He said, Do not say, I am only. Well, I was thinking about that. I know this isn't exactly what the text means, but I was thinking how God's name is I am. So when you say, I am only, and you're supposed to take God's name, you mess up the name that He gave you by diminishing it in your own sight. I am only. Do not say, I am only. Do not say, I am only. I'm only a boy. But David said, No, no, no. I've never faced this giant before. Get ready to shout. But I brought the same God to this valley that I brought to the last valley. Because the only reason I'm preaching it is because you're standing in front of something right now. You've never seen this before. But David said, Here's the common pattern I've, I've noticed, okay? I dropped the lion. I drop the bear. It only stands to reason that if the lion didn't stand a chance, if the bear didn't stand a chance, because they opposed my father's business, if this giant opposes the purpose of God, I predict an upset victory over everything in your life that is bigger than you, that opposes the purpose of God within you. Come on, he's the God of a turnaround. So, I know, somebody shout, I know how this story ends, because I know who wrote it. I know who wrote it. He is the author and the perfecter of my faith. She looked at me last week on our date night, and, and this movie was going to have a nice ending, but then she remembered that the writer of this particular movie is, is noted for everybody dying in the end. And she looked at me. Now, I want you to get this when I say it, okay? She said, it can't be over. I just remembered who wrote it. Come on. You know it's a word for you. You know there's some things, because we tell ourselves these stories, but if God wrote it, it's not over till we win. It's not over until the light overcomes the darkness. Come on, Nairobi. Come on, Gaston. Come on, Valentine. It's not over. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.